Thank you. Um, I'm very nervous. Sorry. Well, I just wanted to thank you for having me here today. Um, it's amazing to see how many people are here. So I'm here to share my personal story and to speak on behalf of the many whose stories echo mine. I don't stand here as someone in politics. I don't stand here as someone in religion. I stand here as someone who has been through abortion. Um, as it has been highly publicised, I was coerced into an abortion. Uh, the reason why it was publicised it was because my ex-boyfriend played in the NRL. So um, I was coerced into abortion through emotional and psychological blackmail. Um, so I found out I was pregnant at six weeks. And whilst I knew the timing wasn't ideal, um, I was actually still really excited. I had the thought of having a baby. As I always say, unplanned, but not unwanted. Yeah. However, moments after sharing the news with him, I was quite stunned at the heartlessness of his reaction, saying, well, you know what we're going to do. Uh, he told me instantly to abort, or I would be facing this pregnancy alone. So over the next few weeks, I would be subjected to a really horrifying amount of domestic abuse and manipulation. And I had begged him to talk things through with me and to support me keeping the baby. But I was told things like, how could you ruin my life like this? Why would you bring a child into this world when it's unwanted by the father? And this child will haunt me. After weeks of enduring this and not knowing what to do, it ultimately led me to booking an abortion. As I was to eventually find out, domestic violence and abortion are very closely linked. And stories such as mine were more common than we would ever think. Since my story went public, I have been contacted by multiple women who aborted due to coercion. One man even telling his partner he would end his own life if she didn't abort. So when you are bombarded with that type of abuse, control and manipulation, you do become exhausted, scared, rejected. And for me personally, my thought processes were skewed. And I always reflect and it can be quite scary to see how controlled and negatively influenced I was. And I'm a, I'm a pretty tough woman, but even the strong of us, strongest of us can be weakened. So I cannot imagine when abortion can be up until birth, the floodgates that will open. Um, I eventually called an abortion clinic and I was actually able to book an appointment instantly, no questions asked. I had heard that there was a possibility that if the counselor at the clinic found you like unfit for abortion, you could not have one. So I felt that was a safeguard. Through lack of a better word, I somewhat looked forward to the session as I thought I would be able to talk things through with clarity. With her experience and expertise in the field, she would see this is not my decision and would turn me away. But I was very wrong. The counseling session lasted minutes and when I asked why, and when she asked why I wanted an abortion, I replied, because he said it's too early in our relationship. She said, well, that's a good reason to have one. And that was it. I was the only one fighting for this baby. And when this so-called expert was so casual about it all, I was very deflated. I felt defeated and I actually even felt like I was being dramatic. As I entered the abortion room and sat on the abortionist table, I was thinking to myself that I actually wanted to leave, but I felt too scared. The day I was there, there was actually a woman screaming in the waiting room. And I woke up next to her. And then after the procedure, we were led to uh, recliners and I'll never forget the nurse just looking at her watch and it was like she just wanted us to get out. And that was it. Um, the counsellor made it more clear for me to take the antibiotics afterwards more than anything else. I was never told of the psychological risks, only the fact that, like I said, I may become unwell if I didn't take antibiotics, but honestly, that was it. Sorry. 
Two days after the abortion, when the morning sick sickness subsided and all the sleep was caught up on, the realization of that regret and grief slammed into me. And it was then that I realized that there is an incredibly dark side to abortion and how it is not the best choice. So many of us are misinformed into believing it is. And by the way, the domestic violence that this was supposed to free me from didn't stop either. As the months went on, I spiraled into depression and severe anxiety and contemplated taking my life on many occasions. And I, as I said in my interview with Channel 9, I wanted to be hit by a train. And so I would ask my mum to come pick up my daughter because I had planned to do that. I was very alone. I was very depressed. I would, I would rarely eat. I barely slept. But speaking of my daughter, she is actually the one thing that kept me here. I actually get more emotional speaking about her than anything else. So in 2010, I was pregnant. I was actually quite um, excited to be pregnant. And then I told my boss and he told me, I told him I was 14 weeks pregnant and he told me that he thinks I can still get an abortion at 14 weeks. I was stunned. I was telling him some good news. And because I was pregnant, he fired me. Shame. Um, my partner left me and the woman I was um, I actually had like this dream job. I was in an apartment, beachside apartment, was earning great money. So everything was really great at 24 years old. So my boss fired me. My friend I was living with told me that I was making the biggest mistake of my life and she wouldn't live with me anymore. And my partner left me. So I found myself moving back in with my parents. I um, was fired and I had to go on Centrelink because it turns out not many people are employing uh, seven month pregnant women and um, I was single and um, some may say and according to this bill that this is a good time to abort in fact the majority of people around me did except for two people and that was my parents And with the support of my mum and dad, I was actually able to bring my beautiful daughter, who's now seven, into this world. <laughs> On my daughter's recent report card, it actually ended with the fact that she is a phenomenal role model for all of her peers. She received an Academic Excellence Award last year at school, and she just we were just in Queensland last week for dancing finals to which her troupe are now the national champions. And in her first dance solo competition, she came first. Yeah. So that little girl that was supposed to ruin my life, she has made me a better person. When I was 24, all I would do is drink and party and live selfishly. And she taught me to grow up and she taught me this incredible unconditional love oh, I love that girl so much and it's actually her that inspires me every day she makes me want to be a better person there's so much talk about how children ruin your life so I say in this short time and with a countless things to say I'll leave you with this I've had an abortion I've actually had a miscarriage as well and I am a mother and choosing life positively changed mine, ending life almost ended mine. My daughter is a prime example that with the right support, we can raise human beings who better this world. How did we get to this place? We can do better for women. Thank you.